Witness, if you will, a lavish mansion with all the pomp and prestige of the Victorian era. But there's a twist. You see, inside, behind its regal facade, lies a labyrinth of rooms and corridors. 27,000 square feet, seemingly built without reason. Doors opening onto walls, windows in the floor, and stairs to nowhere. 160 rooms in total, taking 38 years to complete. Who would build such a place, and why? The answers to such queries can be found within the walls of this, the Winchester Mystery House. Enter Sarah Winchester, heir to the Winchester rifle fortune, and heir to a curse brought upon by lives ended looking down the barrel of a Winchester rifle. She's tormented with grief and fear. Her daughter Annie died prematurely, just 40 days after birth an event Sarah Winchester never truly recovered from. Further traumas occurred years later when her mother and father-in-law died, leaving her husband William Winchester in charge of the Winchester fortune. Three months later, as if to leave the most bitter and painful pill for last, Sarah's beloved husband died unexpectedly of tuberculosis, leaving Sarah Winchester with millions of dollars in the bank and emptiness in her heart that no amount of money could fill. Following these tragedies, she traveled to Boston to meet with a medium named Adam Combs. The medium supposedly managed to make contact with her dearly departed husband during a seance, confirming her suspicion that she indeed was cursed. When asked how to stop it, William gave her specific instructions. Build a large house to appease the spirits. Make it lavish, so as to attract only the good spirits. Make sure to never stop building. Stop building, and the curse will get you. He added one more instruction. Leave her hometown of New Haven, Connecticut, and settle out west. A seemingly reasonable set of instructions. To a woman blinded by grief. Throwing away logic to find a reason in the ghostly realm of the supernatural. In 1885, she ended up purchasing 161 acres of farmland in a place called San Jose, California, near San Francisco. On the site was a modest farmhouse, and almost immediately she hired 22 carpenters and began transforming the farmhouse into her bizarre mansion. The mansion had no formal architect designing it. Instead, all plans were designed and drawn by Sarah herself. She read several books on architecture and construction to gain a better understanding of how to build. Winchester would seek architectural inspiration through the supernatural by conducting seances. Her moments of inspiration, she believed, were actually good spirits telling her what to build. Knowing this, it's understandable why the mansion looks as erratically arranged as it does. She decided upon a Victorian mansion the most popular style for the wealthy at the time. Victorian mansions were designed to show opulence. They featured bay windows, pitch roofs, and often towers. Ornamentation was an important part of Victorian, with wooden trim work along the eaves of the roof. It was also common to find Gothic architectural details embedded within, including stained glass windows. Inside, Victorian mansions were notoriously dark and drab spaces, mainly due to small, cramped rooms. The Winchester Mystery House had all of these details in spades. As mentioned, there were a total of 160 rooms, 40 of which were bedrooms. It's said that Sarah would sleep in a different bedroom each night, so as to always keep bad spirits away from her. Winchester included the customary rooms for a Victorian mansion, such as parlors and drawing rooms, and rooms for servants. There were five fully functioning kitchens to serve the army of workers continuously building the house. She also required the entire house be built entirely of redwood. Interestingly, she didn't like redwood, causing workers to make a fake grain and stain it. Maybe it was a compromise with her ghostly collaborator. For as strange as the house might have been, Sarah made the house exude luxury. 
She spared no expense decorating every room of the house with lush furnishings, artwork, and rich building materials. There were chandeliers imported from Europe. Sarah even designed special stained glass windows for some of the rooms, featuring sinister spiderweb patterns. She also included many technological innovations for the time, including electricity throughout the house and five elevators. As the 20th century dawned, Sarah's mansion had grown immensely to include seven stories topped by an impressive cupola. Then on the morning of April 18, 1906, the destructive San Francisco earthquake rocked the mansion, bringing with it significant damage. The largest loss to the mansion was when the seven-story tower came crashing down into parts of the house. It's said that Sarah was trapped in her room for hours after the quake. Seeing it as a message from the spirits, she decided to expand the mansion outward, not upward. She also decided not to repair much of what was damaged, and yet construction continued. And then the day came. The day, September 5th, 1922. She would make that dreaded step into another world. Was it all worth it? Was the constant hammering and building able to appease the spirits enough to let her rest in peace? Only Sarah could say. As the story goes, the hammering of the workmen continued even as she took her final breaths, as though to get one final expansion done before the end. Story, in place of truth, is all we really know of Sarah Winchester and her life. Whether the haunting tale just told is true or not, who is to say? Consider if you will, though, that her incessant building to appease spirits might have actually been projecting her guilt and grief onto something else, something supernatural beyond her control. Again, who's to say? What can be said of Sarah and her mysterious house is not only that she created such a peculiar work of architecture but whether true or not, gave us one of the most intriguing and puzzling ghost stories in history.